I'm a full-time composer and I've lived in Los Angeles for the last five years now. In 2023, I made $60,000 exclusively from composing, but you might be surprised to know that the majority of my clients are not based in LA. In fact, I could probably do this work from anywhere. Post pandemic, the composing industry, like many industries, has been shifting to a digital space. And I believe that right now is one of the best times to be a remote composer. But composing remotely, getting your network and finding work opportunities is not fast, it's not easy, and it's certainly not guaranteed. In this video, I'd like to discuss the pros and cons of living in LA as a composer, show you my clients so you can see a breakdown of where my income and client base comes from, and teach you the three things I think you absolutely must start doing if you're trying to compose remotely. Before we jump into that, just a quick shout out. The bootcamp is starting very soon. If you're watching this video in March, then the bootcamp starts in April. Enrollment runs for one week and you can still jump on our wait list to save $500 on enrollment. If you're watching this video later, you can find details by just clicking the link in the description. So first of all, why do people move to LA in the first place? There is a good reason for it and there are a ton of pros to be here, both personally and professionally. There's lots of opportunities. There are tons of film, game, TV, animation studios all over LA, not just in LA itself, but in Burbank, Glendale, Pasadena, there's a ton of studios. That also means that there's a ton of industry folks and therefore it's easy to network with people, make those connections. There's lots of events like live meetups, mixers, concerts, tons of things that make it really fun and fruitful to be here. In my experience, there's also a bit of camaraderie that comes with that. When you can tell another composer that's based in LA that you live in LA, there's kind of this uh, sense of, oh yeah, me too. I don't know if that's because everybody knows how tough it is <laughs> to live here because it's expensive, or if it's just that funness of saying, hey, you live right next door, but maybe a little bit of both. Because of that camaraderie, all the different events, and all of the creative people out here, it is really helpful because it can scale your career rather quickly. If you find the right person, if you connect and you build good trust with that person, they can give you opportunities that can then leverage your career upwards. However, there are some cons that come with it. First of all, Obviously, LA is incredibly expensive. The average studio apartment in 2024 when I'm recording this video is $2,000 a month. That is not cheap. And you're in a career that doesn't make a lot of money in the beginning. It is incredibly difficult to sustain that when you're living somewhere like LA. As a result, what happens is a lot of people often have to find non-music jobs, non-composing jobs. This is true of all industries. and. The problem with that is we need a lot of time to invest into our composing careers to be able to do it. If you have to pay the bills by going and doing other things, it's very unlikely and very risky that you'll be able to have the time to sustain it for a living. The other huge con is with all the people, all the creative people that come here, there's also a lot of competition. How do you stand out amongst the crowd when you have people that are always gonna be better than you and willing to work longer hours than you? It becomes very difficult to differentiate yourself out here. And sure, you might be able to find a couple people that cling on to you, but what often happens is the work that comes from LA comes from people who are established, who don't necessarily wanna pass the reins onto you, but instead wanna just give you a little bit of work opportunities on the side. It's difficult to scale out here and to kind of print your stamp and become your own person. So my advice if you are going to move to LA is make sure that you've really built up your industry connections and your composing career a little bit beforehand. Don't come out here with nothing to show. You have to come out here prepared. When I moved to LA in 2019, I was already doing music work for a living. I wasn't composing full time, but I was doing a little composing, a little copyist work, a little orchestration. I also had a network of people that I was planning on meeting when I was out here, and that was invaluable because COVID hit in 2020, quarantine hit in 2020, and I was really out of work for a long time here. I had built up my savings while I was living in Nashville, Tennessee, and that really helped immensely. Had I not done that, I would have been in big trouble really, really big trouble out here. Now, during that time in quarantine, when I was really eager to get composing work, I had to start to get a little creative on how to find people, people that would trust me enough to hire me. So I experimented. I made YouTube videos. I've been making YouTube videos for a long time, but I really dug deeper into that. And I also explored remote networking. 
I would talk to people through social media, I'd reach out to them, I would set up Zoom calls, and what I found was people were actually incredibly willing to have these meetups with me. Over time, what happened is I wound up getting a network of people that really had never met me in person, but trusted me enough to work with me. So what I've done is I've gone back and tracked the last six months of revenue I've made as a composer and broken that down by client, whether they're LA based or remote. Let's start with the LA clients. First of all, you'll see I've only got four names total. I've hidden their names obviously for privacy. They generated a total of $12,000 in revenue for the last six months. Four clients, $12,000. Now on the flip end, if we look at the remote clients, we've got quite a few more clients. We've got nine total, and they generated a total of $14,000 in revenue. That tells us two things. Number one, I'm getting a lot more clients that are not based in LA. Number two, the clients that are based in LA are paying me a little bit more. Now this is a bit more nuanced because the majority of these clients that are LA based, I'm not actually working with like animation studios or filmmakers, I'm actually working with composers. So I'm writing additional music for these composers that is then getting me paid work. On the flip end, all of the work I'm doing remotely, that's for animators, filmmakers, commercials, promos. It's stuff where I can get my name fully credited on those projects, which is a benefit. Now, what's really interesting is even though we have this split of the LA and the remote clients, let's talk about the acquisition, how I actually found these clients or how they found me. If we go to the LA clients, we're gonna see primarily referrals. So these clients were told by someone else that they know, hey, Zach is good to work with, you should work with him. Word of mouth is the primary way that I got work in LA. On the flip end, if we talk about remote clients, all but one of those clients found me through YouTube, through all the work that I've done in making videos and posting content on YouTube. That's really cool for me because I have control over YouTube and the content I can make. Now referred work is probably a little easier to get because word of mouth is generally easier than building a whole channel on YouTube, but it is very possible as you can see to build content online and be able to get paid work doing it. The last thing I wanna say about this is even the LA clients, even though they are Los Angeles based, many of them decided to work with me after seeing my YouTube videos. Maybe they got referred from a friend, but YouTube in a lot of ways has been a confirmation to people that I know what I'm doing and I'm the right person to work with for the project that they're working on. So. YouTube has been indispensable for me in my career. So with this in mind, what are the three things you can start doing right now to be able to ensure that you can build a composing career outside of Los Angeles? The very first thing you need to do is to stop waiting to network. I can't tell you how many composers think my music is not good enough for me to start building my network. If I do it now, I'm gonna blow my opportunity. I need to wait until my music sounds professional for me to network. It is just not True, I have coached over 200 composers in one-to-one -one coaching sessions back when I was doing that, and I can tell you confidently, almost all of them were writing music that was good enough to get paid for. Now, that doesn't mean they're gonna write music that is AAA film, but they're certainly able to get opportunities composing indie projects and getting paid to do it. The problem was that they never felt like they were good enough to start. They waited, and what did they do instead? Instead of networking, they would apply to jobs online. They would maybe loosely send out these kind of tentative emails, but not really do anything. They wouldn't share their work online. They kept it all close to the chest, and that's why they weren't able to find work opportunities. For the record, that was me too. Years ago, I felt like I wasn't sure how to do this, and so I did job applications, and I'd send out email blasts and look for industry network contact websites to contact people. And I'm telling you, it doesn't work. You have to find people that can trust you, and the only way you can do that is by building those relationships. Now you might think, well, I don't live in LA, I live in such and such a place and I don't know anyone, there's nobody in my industry. That's where we all start. You know, you don't need secret backdoor industry connections to be able to do this for a living. It starts with the people you already know. So many times people think, I don't know anybody in the industry, and then you just dig a little bit and you find out, well, my friend went to college with this person who knows this composer you're probably only a couple degrees away from someone who can actually help you in your career. And the only way you're gonna find that out is by actively finding it out, <laughs> networking and doing it. Now, the second thing you absolutely have to start doing is you have to start showing your skills online. People love to say that it is just too competitive to share your music. It's too competitive a space online, but it's always been competitive in this industry, in every industry, just in different forms. Think of how difficult it would have been for someone who did not have the internet to be able to get their music heard. 
Maybe they would have had to tour the world, spend loads of money on travel and transportation and advertising simply to get their music in front of new ears. In this industry, all you have to do is download Instagram, it's free, post your content online, and boom, you have the opportunity to have loads of people listening to your music. Now, just because you're using social media doesn't mean that you're entitled to get that viewership. That viewership and that audience is earned. And the key thing you have to do to earn that audience is to start sharing value with them. Many composers will treat the online space like a portfolio for their music. So they'll just share playthroughs of their Logic videos or Pro Tools or whatever they use, and then say, well, why aren't people watching my content? And the reason they're not watching your content is because you need to provide value beyond your art to people. In the bootcamp, we talk about lots of ways you can do that, inspiration, education, entertainment. There's loads of ways you can do that, but the key is to think about how you can benefit the people that you're making content for. Building that content is key if you're not living somewhere like LA to being able to build an audience and therefore convert some of that audience into potential clients for your composing work. And the third and final thing you absolutely have to do if you're not living in LA to be able to do this full time is you need to seek mentorship. This is a lesson I learned way too late. I used to be so stubborn about this. I would think, ah, you know, I don't need anybody's help. I can just do it myself. And that's why this took me so long to do. I dreamt of composing when I was 14 years old and I'm 30 now and only a couple years ago was I able to do it full time. I could have gotten there a lot faster if I had leaned on help a little bit more. I was lucky I even stuck with it to be honest because trying it on your own is the quickest way to burn out or potentially give up altogether. And burnout long term is not gonna be a sustainable way for you to do this career. You need to pace yourself and you need to seek guidance to save you time pain and energy. Back when I wanted to find more paid work, I reached out to my cousin, Jason Lafredo. He's actually a music copyist and he was able to teach me skills that cut down my ability to learn Finale in a quarter. I learned it in less than a year and that was able to get me paid work as a music copyist. During my time in Nashville, Tennessee, I wound up meeting Clone War composers, Kevin Kiner during a recording session. The one piece of advice he gave me to get better at my mock-ups was able to get me so much paid work for the years to come because I took it seriously and leaned on his mentorship. In fact, I've been so influenced by mentorship, learning from people who know more than me, that I still pay for weekly coaching and business classes myself. I'm a perpetual student, and that is how I'm able to grow. It's also the reason why I created the Composing Career Bootcamp in the first place, because I recognized as a composer myself, the need for that guidance, mentorship, and personal accountability to be able to sustain this career long-term. Now, just to close things out, yes, it is difficult to build this career outside of LA, but it's also difficult to build it in LA. It doesn't happen overnight, you have to be patient, but most importantly, you have to be persistent. You cannot just lean on your art. You have to be able to lean on your business skills and learn those skills to be able to do this full time. Now, if that all feels overwhelming, I challenge you just to push yourself with one new thing every day. Maybe you reach out to someone you've been thinking might be able to help you. Maybe you finally create your first social media post. Maybe you decide to close your Fiverr account because you know maybe that's just a crutch for finding work. Whatever it is, try one new thing a day. It doesn't have to be big and continue that to build momentum as you push through your career. That's all for today's video. If you found this helpful, you can leave a like and subscribe for more. I do both talking head videos like this as well as tutorials for composers every week. Thanks so much, see you in the next one.